Um, hi everyone. Um, hi everyone. Today we're going to be yeah, focusing be on immigration, uh, uh, particularly uh, refugee and asylum seekers in um, Europe. So our main objectives so our today main objective are students will be able to define the terms refugee and immigrant and asylum, and students will be able to distinguish between some facts and misconceptions surrounding the refugee crisis. Um, so we're going to start off just introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Annie. I am a senior at UNC. I'm a history and global studies major with a minor in education. And last summer, I lived in China for two months. And then over last fall, I lived in the UK for four months. So this time, I'm going to be talking about the UK. Has anyone been to the UK? I know we can't to you guys, but if anyone's been to the UK, you can raise your hand and look around. Yeah, no hands up. Okay. Cool. Um, that's great. Good to know. Um, all right. So, Emma, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Emma. I'm a senior here at UNC as well. I am a global studies and Italian double major um, with a minor in anthropology. And so I've lived and worked in Italy a couple of different times. Um, I first studied abroad in high school and then again. Again, two semesters ago. Two semesters. Um, has yeah. anyone been to Italy? Uh, has anyone been to Italy? I have one hand. Okay, oh, awesome. Okay, awesome. Um, Claire, do you want to um, Claire, Claire. Yeah. yeah, hi everybody. My name yeah, is Claire. Hi everybody. My name is And I'm a junior yeah, here at I'm UNC and I'm majoring in economics and Spanish with a minor in public policy. So I'm going to be talking so about I'm Spain talk today about because Spain I studied today. abroad there studied this abroad past there. spring, and so I lived there for five months. So has anyone been to Spain? So, has anyone been to Spain? No? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start I just off. Got the I'm slides start up. I just got the slides up, so I'll keep up with you. You just tell me next slide. Okay, perfect. So, okay, perfect. Um, so I'm going to start us off I'm with some sort of background, about, background the about the difference about between an immigrant and a refugee, so I don't think we have a slide so for this one. Um, so to start um, off, I'm just so going to talk about the difference between an immigrant and a refugee. So an immigrant is anyone who leaves their home country to go live in another country. So immigrants come to a new country for many different reasons. It could be looking for a better job or economic opportunities. It could be to reunite with family who lives in a different country. Or it could be to escape um, bad conditions in their home country. So this last group of people includes refugees. And a refugee is someone refugee who is outside of their home country, and they can't, they're unable to return um, due to persecution or the threat of persecution um, based on something like their religion or their race or their gender, um, and it makes it unsafe for them to go back to their home country. So today we're specifically going to be talking about Europe and the refugee crisis that's happening there. And that's mainly being caused by the civil war that's going on in Syria right now. So there's a lot of um, refugees that are trying to enter Europe right now. Um, and um, this is something that's not just affecting Europe, Europe, it's also affecting Europe. us here in the U.S. Here in the so US. the Carver area, so which is Carver really area, close to where we go to school here at UNC, here at UNC is actually home it's to actually hundreds home of refugees from Burma, um, which is a country in Asia, um, and we're also Asia, starting to receive some refugees from Syria as well. So this is something that is affecting our communities here in North Carolina too. So a little bit of background uh, on the situation in Europe. Um, this is the worst um, refugee the worst crisis refugee that they've experienced since World, experienced World War II. And in 2015, so last year, more than a million migrants um, reached the European uh, Union in the Mediterranean Sea and applied for asylum in one of the European Union countries. And Emma's going to talk a little bit more about asylum and how that works later. So the process for refugees is really is really long and obtuse. It takes years for them to find a new country to go to after they've had to leave their country. And, you know, they have to prove that they're in danger in their home country. And they also have to prove that they're dangerous and they're not a threat to the country they're trying to go to. And a lot of times they don't really stay in the country that they end up in. Um, they kind of get placed wherever the country is willing to take them. 
So that's a little bit about the different immigrants and refugees and what's happening in Europe right now. So Emma is going to talk a little bit more specifically about Italy and how the refugee crisis is affecting them. And real quick, um, yeah, I was going to see if maybe you guys could mute while we're talking so that we don't hear the feedback and then unmute when you want to say something to us. All right, I'm muted now. All right, thanks. Okay. Hey, guys. Um, so, like Claire said, I'm going to be talking to you about the refugee, cri refugee crisis in Italy. Um, so, I have studied abroad and lived in Italy and absolutely love it. But with that being said, um, Italy is not perfect, and the refugee crisis is an area that they have some work to do. So, the refugee crisis affects Italy pretty heavily. Um, in 2015, 157,000 refugees arrived in Italy. Um, oh, also, Kimberly, if you want to go to the map of the first slide um, with a map of kind of a general map of Italy. Um, so in 2016, almost 140,000 refugees have arrived in Italy, and we still have three more months in the year. Um, so it's getting a little bit better, but still a lot of people arriving. Italy is so heavily affected um, due to its location. Um, so it's one of the primary arrival countries. So if you go to the next slide, um, and you can see that there's not much um, much of the Mediterranean Sea that separates uh, from the African coast to Italy. Um, the refugees that arrive in Italy are mainly from Eritrea, Nigeria, Senegal, um, Syria. Um, and so basically what happens is the refugees leave their home countries and make what are often already very difficult journeys on land until they reach Libya. Um, and you can see on this slide with the, um, with the map, with the trail across the Mediterranean Sea, um, that then their journey transitions to um, a trip on sea. So this is called the Central Mediterranean Route. Um, it's one of several refugee routes, and it departs from the Libyan coast, um, and the refugees often try to attempt to arrive on Lampedusa or Sicily, which are two southern islands um, off the coast of Italy. So um, a huge issue uh, in these trips is the danger to get across the Mediterranean. Um, on the next slide, you can see a picture of a typical boat um, that the refugees might board to get across, um, across the sea. So you can see they're not boarding these big, nice ships. Often they're extremely small, unstable, sometimes they're even inflatable boats um, that are not meant to cross a sea and definitely not meant to hold um, hundreds of passengers. Also, uh, refugees often pay massive sums of money, normally their entire life savings along with everything they own, um, for a spot on one of these boats. Um, so if you can think about everything, all the money you've ever saved up, everything you own, and giving that just to get a spot on one of these crowded old boats. Um, so after that, um, for the refugees that do arrive safely on Italian soil, they're, unfortunately, their trip is not over. Um, they must be documented. So they give their fingerprints, um, their information to the authorities, the Italian authorities. And, um, and they go on to live in refugee camps. Refugee camps in Italy are often old, uh, unused buildings, not exactly fit to live in, um, that lack basic resources, but refugees stay here while, um, if they're seeking asylum, which Claire talked to you all about, about earlier, um, then they'll start to uh, that process there. So asylum is when a person who's been persecuted or mistreated by their own country um, is looking to be protected by another country, so in this case, Italy. Asylum is ideally supposed to be granted to those who qualify within about one or two months, but that's very optimistic. Um, in Italy, refugees can end up waiting to be granted asylum 
all while living in these crowded refugee camps um, for anywhere from three months to several years. If asylum is granted, which is to less than half of those who apply, um, it's really hard for these refugees to find work and start living what we would consider a normal life. Uh, this is largely in part to Italy's economy. So Italy has a high unemployment rate. It's 12.7%, um, which should give you some comparison here in the U.S. Our unemployment rate is 4.9% at the moment. So it's much higher than um, the U.S. And so Italians are already struggling to find jobs. And this struggle is only multiplied for refugees who may have just arrived in the country. Maybe they don't speak Italian or um, are seen as untrustworthy by the locals. So this leads to many of these people, many of these newly arrived refugees, um, to start searching for under the table or illegal work, which unfortunately only adds to Italy's already existing problem of corruption. So overall, Italy is often criticized for the way it handles, um, the way it is in the process of handling the refugee crisis, but um, new strategies and approaches definitely need to be considered, but not only by Italy, um, kind of by the European Union and everyone um, that is involved as a whole. So now Claire is going to talk to you all uh, about the same crisis, but how it affects a different country, how it affects Spain um, in a different way. So Claire. Oh, you're muted, Claire. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, like Emma said, I'm going to talk about Spain, and we have a little. We should have a little map on there on the next slide that sort of um, shows you where Spain is, and you can see that it's pretty close to Italy. But Spain has had a very different experience with the refugee crisis than Italy. Um, so, unlike Italy, Spain has not received many refugees at all, um, and there's a couple of different reasons for that that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but last year, they pledged to take about 15,000 refugees from countries like Greece and Italy that were um, experiencing um, a huge incoming of refugees. But as of April of this year, um, less than 100 refugees had actually been accepted. So that hasn't quite um, turned into action yet. So mo a lot of the immigrants that are coming into Spain are coming through the north of Africa. And um, you can kind of see on the map that the very northern tip of Morocco, which is the country in the north of Africa, is really close to the southern tip of Spain. And there's actually some um, cities in the north of Africa that are Spanish territories. So people um, who are coming into Spain, a lot of times are coming that way through northern Africa. Um, but so why hasn't Spain accepted as many refugees as Italy? Um, so for one thing, Spain's economy is doing really poorly right now. Um, they have been economic crisis since 2008. So kind of like the U.S. experience, but Spain's has been a lot worse. And they also have very high unemployment. So Emma said that the U.S. is about 5% right now, and Italy's is about 12%. Um, and Spain's unemployment rate is over 22% right now. So there's, again, a lot of Spanish people that are having trouble finding jobs, and a lot of um, people in Spain are moving to other countries in Europe to try to find jobs. So um, for one thing, the government is, of Spain is really hesitant to accept a lot of refugees, and also um, there's just not much opportunity for them in Spain once they arrive. Um, and then another reason is the geography, because as you can see, Spain's a lot farther um, west than Italy, so it's more difficult for people to get to from places like Syria. They'd have to travel a lot longer across northern Africa to get there, so um, that's another reason. And it's kind of interesting to see how different Spain's experience with the refugee crisis has been from countries like Italy. Um, it'll be interesting to see also if they follow through with their pledge to um, accept some of those refugees from other countries um, or see if anything changes, if their economy starts to get better. Um, Clara, so what's the public opinion like towards immigrants and refugees coming into Spain right now? Yeah, so public opinion in Spain um, with regards to accepting refugees is actually pretty positive. A lot of the people in Spain um, want their government to be accepting more refugees, but um, and they're calling on the government to accept more, but that just hasn't really happened yet. So um, one interesting thing is that a lot of times public opinion changes once a country starts to accept refugees. So right now, um, most people in Spain like the idea of their country 
accepting more refugees, but um, it hasn't quite turned into action yet. Ooh, it's really interesting. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the UK now. And the UK is kind of similar in nature to Spain um, in the sense that it hasn't been taking as many refugees as other European countries like Italy. Um, so the next slide, um, the last slide on the PowerPoint is just a slide of kind of Europe as a whole, but you can kind of see the UK is in the far upper left. Um, and there's an arrow kind of showing where the English Channel is. Um, so the UK not only is even farther away from the Mediterranean, it's actually a separate island, so it's separate from Europe as a whole. Uh, so not only do they have to, refugees particularly coming from Africa or Syria or the Middle East, not only do they have to cross the Mediterranean and get across Europe, they also have to get across the English Channel, which is the body of water between France and the UK, um, to get to the UK. So in part, the UK has been taking less refugees because purely based on geography, it's harder for them to get there. Um, also policies. Um, the UK hasn't been as welcoming to refugees as well. The UK is a part of the EU, which is the European Union, um, which is an organization. It's a political, social, and economic um, entity in Europe. It, there's about 28 countries in it. And it's, they've been passing laws. They have human rights ordinances, so a lot of countries have been taking in refugees, but the UK has always kind of been separate from that. They haven't taken the euro, which is their currency, um, among other things, so they've kind of stayed outside of that, and they haven't been as welcoming. Even so, they did pledge to take over 20,000 refugees by 2020, uh, but they've been, currently they've been criticized a lot uh, by different organizations, human rights organizations, global organizations, even their own um, certain members of parliament. Um, Parliament is their system of government in the UK, and they've been criticized and said that the government's not currently doing enough to meet this commitment. Uh, they've currently only they've taken less than 2,000 uh, refugees, and they haven't really been actively trying to reach uh, their goal of 20,000. Um, including, they also have a lot of asylum applications, so even before the refugee crisis, particularly from countries like Syria, became really prominent. Um, they've been dealing with asylum applications and they haven't really been processing them as quickly or as efficiently as they should be. Um, so currently there are a lot of people waiting for decisions from asylum committees um, to grant them asylum. So right now they're stuck in this weird kind of limbo state um, because they're technically on UK soil, but because they haven't been granted asylum, they can't legally work, they can't make money, they're stuck, um, they can't really start to rebuild their lives and integrate into society. They honestly don't know if they're going to be able to stay there, if they're going to be able to become British citizens. Um, currently, unfortunately, there are over 34,000 applications that are still waiting for a decision whether or not they will be granted asylum. Um, so that's really unfortunate for people that are trying to get asylum and for refugees that want to go to the UK. Um, so kind of in contrast to Spain, um, the public sentiment towards refugees is not as positive. There are a lot of people that do want to take in refugees. Um, so I don't want to kind of generalize it, but there was a very real example of the kind of fear and hatred and stigma towards refugees and immigrants um, during an event this past year called Brexit. Um, we won't have you on mute, but if anyone knows what Brexit is, raise your hand. Hopefully some of you have heard it before. Um, so Brexit is abbreviation for British Exit, um, which refers to um, the event on June 23rd, 2016, so it happened over the summer. There was a referendum where British citizens voted to leave the European Union. So I talked a little bit about before what the European Union is. It's a unique economic and political union between the majority of European states. Uh, it was formed after the Second World War uh, to kind of foster economic cooperation, um, the idea that countries that they can trade together, uh, they, it's also easier for, you don't have to have a visa, you don't have to have um, kind of approval to go to a different country to work. If you have a European Union passport, you can go anywhere and work anywhere. Um, but Britain has always kind of been separate, they haven't taken the euro, so there was actually a vote this past summer to leave the European Union. So that, and so during that time, there was a lot of, there was kind of the pro leaving the EU, EU and then against it. And so a lot of people that wanted to leave the EU, they started kind of using rhetoric of, oh, we don't want immigrants coming in. They're taking our jobs. Oh, refugees are dangerous. We don't want them coming in. And the EU is forcing us to take them. So there were, and this wasn't 
by any means the general consensus, not what everyone believed, but in the media, in the news, on social media, there was a lot of hate speech that happened. Um, there were a lot of kind of racist um, incidents, people kind of calling out and criticizing refugees, saying that they're going to hurt the economy, hurt um, kind of the social sphere as well. But in reality, um, it's an interesting, a lot of studies have found that immigrants are younger and significantly more educated than people born inside the UK. Um, and most studies have shown that migration is a boost to the British economy than a drain on it. Uh, so unfortunately, the public anger that was created towards immigration and refugees was kind of a bigger, it was kind of used as a way to explain their anger for housing issues, unemployment issues. Um, a lot of people in the UK feel a sense of alienation, they have losing their identity because there's so many diverse cultures now in the UK, which is great. Um, but the anti-EU group was able to kind of foster and create this hatred and uncertainty and uh, fear of refugees and immigrants. So that's unfortunate. It's been happening a lot in countries from all over the world, it's evident in the US as well. Um, the idea that you know refugees might be terrorists, which is definitely not true at all. Um, so because of that, the refugee crisis is an incredibly emotional issue in the UK and Europe uh, throughout the world. So particularly how did, um, how will the refugee crisis influence the UK, influence um, Brexit? So some people have argued that the refugee crisis threatens the stability of the entire European Union because there's this large um, migration of people coming to the continent. Uh, but there's a lot of studies that have argued that actually it's beneficial because the European population is aging, so actually help them out. Um, but specifically in the UK, people worry that because the UK has kind of passed this law that or has decided not to be part of the EU, they're kind of breaking away from the human rights ordinances and they're kind of deciding to take in refugees. So one, people are worried that other countries seeing how the general public voted to leave the EU, they might be worried about trying to advocate and take more refugees in. Um, so that might be a negative effect in Europe. There's also a worry that um, the, the UK will stop taking as many refugees because they are definitely shifting to a more conservative focus, more kind of focus on like Britain instead of Europe and the world as a whole. Um, so they really, in, Unfortunately, they created this negative picture and this negative stigma around immigrants, around refugees in the UK. And it doesn't, not everyone believes it, it doesn't affect everyone, but there are potential concerns to the future of how it will influence it. Um, so that's just kind of a brief snapshot of how the UK is feeling about refugees and how it's influenced their government and um, policies, as well as how it might affect in the future um, Europe as a whole. So we're, I think we're kind of getting towards the end of our time, um, but we just wanted to kind of go through, we're going to wrap it up a little bit. Um, if you guys have any questions for us, please feel free to write them up. You can send us an email or we can answer them next time we do a session. Um, but really quickly, like how does the European, the refugee crisis and the issues in Europe affect us in the US? Um, so because Italy and Spain and the UK are so close to Africa and the Middle East and the Mediterranean. The refugee crisis has been a big issue in the past few years. It's been debated a lot, um, in part because there are already refugees in Europe. There are already refugees just moving constantly. We saw pictures of the boats. Um, so there's, they need to really work to help these refugees. In the UK or in the US, because we're separated by an ocean, um, it's a little harder for them to take their little boats. Um, and get here, so, but we've been trying to accept them. Um, so the U.S. is dealing with the refugee crisis. Canada has been taking in a lot of refugees. The U.S. has been taking refugees, particularly in Carborough, which is a town um, next to Chapel Hill. We've, since 2009, over 400 Burmese refugees, so people from Burma, um, have come to the U.S. So already we're taking in some Syrian refugees, but it's really important, especially right now during the presidential election presidential debate, um, the presidential candidates are looking at and talking about the refugee crisis and immigration. So it's really important to listen to what they're saying, what people are talking about, um, because there are, in, for instance, Hillary Clinton proposed to take as many as 65,000 refugees 
um, who's currently, particularly in Syria, there are over 4 million people that have been displaced by the Syrian crisis. So we have, there's a lot of people that need our help. So it's really interesting and really important to listen to what people are saying, what our politicians are saying, what human rights and global organizations are saying, um, because it's not, this issue isn't going to go away. So people, like Europe is dealing with it right now, and the U.S. is also dealing with it. Um, so it's really important to kind of figure out what you think about it, research more, people over the world that are refugees and need our help and looking for asylum. Um, I don't know, 